Hello, welcome back to the YouTube channel of Bethel Evangelical Free Church Hanley. I'm Pastor Gervais Charming. This is another video in the series on Cheshire churches. This is the church of St. Margaret's Renbury, which is a lovely, lovely English country name for a village. It's another example of these big Cheshire perpendicular churches. So this is later perpendicular. This is really the very late Middle Ages, the early 16th century. In fact, it, of course, if you date the end of the Middle Ages as the Battle of Bosworth Field, it's, yes, we are right at the end of the Middle Ages. So it's still pre-Reformation architecture. But what we have here is a building where there has not been a major Victorian restoration. And as we go around, you'll see what that means. So without further ado, let's have a look around. And so, as usual, we start at the West End, but you can see we are actually quite some way up in the air at the West End because Renbury retains its gallery. We have st still this West Gallery, it's the Singer's Gallery, the, choir, the, well, the Musicians and Singer's Gallery, and it's still got the organ in it and is still used, these days at least, for choirs at times. But the Victorian vicar brought the choir down from up here because he discovered that the singers were in the habit not of uh, listening but of playing cards during the sermon which of course is highly disrespectful and it's not what you're supposed to be doing in church at all ever and so when we see the choir stalls downstairs the reason of the choir stalls downstairs is a very poorly behaved choir in the 19th century. You can see in the middle we've got this wonderful sh chandelier, 18th century, and there is there the pulpit. It's now a two-decker, but it would originally have been a three-decker, with the usual, we've mentioned them before, that the, the three decks are the, the, clerk, the parish clerk's desk, the reading desk, the vicar, and then the pulpit proper from which the sermon was preached, and nothing else was done up there, not like free churches. Now the organ is up in the gallery here, so um, I'm going to get all in, but it dates from the um, 1880s, the organ. Quite a good example, I think two manual with pedal board, it's locked, so can't see how many keyboards it's got. Um, here we have memorial to Samuel Sproston of Sproston Wood, um, <coughs> who after a, a long course of integrity and benevolence departed his life in the true faith of a Christian, on the 11th day of May, 1858, aged 97 years. This monument was erected in the place of his own selection over the pew he regularly occupied, which has always belonged to the owners of Sproston Wood. And given the surname Sproston and the Sproston Wood, well, tells you something that if the family and the location were very, the house very much connected for centuries. You see there we've got the commandments, the Lord's Prayer and the Creed over the chancel arch. There would originally have been a, well, I say originally, there would have been in the early 19th century a, a copy of the, or uh, the painting of the royal arms over there, but they've been moved somewhere else. And down there you can see box pews, which is, they're not terribly old box pews, they're early 19th century, but they are still box pews, and it's always good to see a church where the box pews have survived. Um, the Victorians didn't like them at all, but the reality is that there's a certain amount of, well, to put it this way, if you lock the door, then unruly toddlers can't get out and wander around the church, something like that. So we'll go downstairs and start then from the font. And so here we are at the font. This is 16th century, and um, quite an impressive the period. You can see it's a little panelled enclosure at the back here. And we have a very common scene, Christ receiving little children. Because, um, of course, Anglicans, are the, they baptise infants. And the norm, they say, is baptising infants here. So here we are. This is called the North Isle. And we shall then wander under the gallery into the and here you these wonderful pews you see all the ones in the nave the, the doors are open they would have employed a pew opener now this is an interesting thing i have to look at this at the back this is the dog whippers pew now the dog whipper 
was responsible for making sure that dogs that wandered into the church behaved themselves. If they didn't, then he would make sure that they left. And one of the things the dog whipper would do, well, of course, he had a whip, um, but also he had dog tongs, which were these things that essentially extending tongs that could be used to pick up a dog and take it out without touching it, and therefore, because without being bitten. So the dog whipper. And so from security from dogs into the church itself. We've got some of these lovely memorials. You'll notice we've got the usual layout with these quite deep aisles and these very, very big uh, tall arches with a clear stray above. Box pews, each of them would have been rented and they would have been you know, free seating somewhere. I suspect it would have been in the uh, in the centre aisle here and just had little benches. There we have the, the pulpit, so it's been lowered, and of course these choir stalls that are installed because the choir can't be trusted to behave themselves when they're up in the gallery. So there we are, very elegant pulpit. It's quite similar to that at St Michael's at Schottick, except well, this one's still in its original position. It hasn't been moved to a different church. The chancel is quite interesting. We'll get to that in a moment. But first of all, we'll, we'll have a look around the back here. And you can see there, there's the West Gallery with the big organ in it. Um, and that's where the, the choir were discovered playing cards. And this is why they were moved to the stalls here. And you can see the stalls are just, just where the vicar can always see what they're up to. That's what happens if you abuse privileges. You lose them. So here we have the... Um, chancel now on the one side on the north side you've got monuments to the family and associates at Renbury Hall and on the other you've got memorials to the family at Combermere Abbey there was a bit of a, an argument bit argy bargy as to who had the right to bury their dead in the chancel and it went all the way to court and the wise judge said one of you take the north side and one of you take the south side. Um, now here what we have is these uh, very nice Georgian sculptures here. And this is um, by J. Bacon Jr. of London. And here we have faith pointing to the skies, pointing the mourner to the sky. So that would be a police figure representing his wife, his widow, uh, or even his, in fact, in this case, his sister. Um, here again, here we have the dying man being pointed to the skies by faith. Faith holds the cross of Christ. Um, and there we have again another one of these uh, very elegant memorials. Um, Lord Combermere, this is uh, Stapleton Cotton, Viscount Combermere, Field Marshal. Um, he was com Governor of Barbados, Commander in Chief of Leeward Island, Commander in Chief in Ireland and of the East Indies, Comfort of the First Lifeguard. Colonel of the First Lifeguards, Constable of the Tower of London. So, uh, very distinguished gentleman. So, this is the Combermere Abbey side. Um, east window, you've got Moses and Aaron and Christ in the middle. So, the law and the gospel. And the law and the gospel bearing witness to Christ. So, we turn around again. And there we go. Back down again, these lovely boxes, modern banners. Um, one always hopes that these banners are handmade and not things that are bought off the internet. Most, most of them are bought on the internet. Um, that's the world we live in. So there we have, here we have the War Memorial window, the 3945 Memorial window here. We've got the uh, Air Force Par Ardua, Par Ardua at Astra. We've got the Navy in the middle. You can see there, there the, the foul anchor. And then, of course, on the right, the Army with the crown and then there we are war memorial um, and more of these um, great memorials but it's, it's, it's just it's a lovely lovely example of these big sand big red sandstone churches and there we have the pulpit and you can see how close the choir stalls are because the choir can't be trusted it's a shame the choir couldn't be trusted, but that was the case, sadly. Well, we'll 
go and have a look outside now and see what we can see. And so here we are outside at Renbury. I know I'm, I'm in the dark and the, the church is in the light, but then we're more interested in the church than me. So, and again, you see this classic form. You've got this turret here that leads up onto the roof. It's, uh, cameras slightly below that you can just say uh, there we go you just see the, the little top of the turret there and it's a typical 16th century turret nice big window and you notice the flat headed windows again that's quite typical of this later perpendicular whereas the windows lower down are pointed I mean it's all just a mild example of perpendicular the Victorians didn't like the perpendicular and I another reason to dislike the Victorians disagree with the Victorians should we say be a bit more diplomatic but thankfully the Victorians did very little here. And so what we have is very much a church that is, this is what churches would have been like really before the Victorians. Well, we'll have a look around the outside and make the usual necessary comments. So here we are outside. As I've already mentioned the tower with that rather nice little OG cap on its uh, stair turret. We can back up a little bit this way and you can see the You've got the yew trees planted around. It's quite, which is quite traditional to have yew trees planted around the church. Um, we have the chancel. The chancel looks like it has at least had some rebuilding in the Georgian era, which wouldn't surprise me given the burials in there. But the rest of it does look basically as it would have been in the 16th century. Even the chancel is quite um, traditional in form. So, a lovely day, a bit of a breeze, always nice. Um, we're here now, this is in, in uh, early July. And here we have the north side, and here we've got this little, um, little aisle. And again, the, the trees, there's a lovely view of that cap. They're here again, the trees. Yes, yes the uh, chance of the date 1806 on it, so that tells me yes, it's, it has been rebuilt by the Georgians. Um, and you know, it doesn't surprise me at all, the stonework is very different and much less weathered than the stone on the aisles. And there we have, of course, the modern, the great modern addition at the end there. The very important toilet block and up here you've got gargoyles and these are these are real gargoyles because they're designed to vomit forth uh, water when it rains and they can be quite spectacular when it rains can gargoyles so there there we are you'll see his uh, spout in the mouth there and yes that is definitely the toilet block um, which is very important um, because back in the day there we let's just say that back in the day people's um, ideas about what was appropriate to do in a churchyard were different um, and people's expectations were different oh look startled face is startled um, so here we are this is the the, the big west tower and say so apart from the chancel the, the church is all of a piece yes here we are the west door's been filled in and that's now our vestry under the tower but this is all of a piece it's very different from some churches that are sort of patchy different dates. This is all of a piece. They'll get together this. There we are, external access to get up the tower. Um, but this is the bells. And there we are, more goggles. So there we are, yes, the bells, the bells. Um, And so there you have it, St Margaret's Renbury, a very pretty late medieval church here in Cheshire. I hope you've enjoyed the video, I've enjoyed making it. It's nice to come out on a glorious summer's day like this and just enjoy something of what can be seen. So thank you for watching and may God bless you and keep you until next time.